serving Channel 9 viewers 24 hours a day. Hi, everybody. Jack Brickhouse here along with my old pal Milo Hamilton for another super game at Wrigley Field. You're about to see a replay of the Cubs-Cardinals shootout of last April 22nd. And what better time than a February night in Chicago to sit back, whet your appetite and ours for the upcoming season. Well, Milo, that game easily had to be the most exciting encounter of 1980. It really was. You know, a year ago when we put on that Cub-Philly game with all those home runs, from the reaction, you knew we'd be doing it again this year. Oh, and yeah. as I look at this card <laughs> and think of all the things that happened, just like the fans, I want to see it all over again. So let's cuddle up with oh, them, shall yeah. we? Oh, yeah, let's don't waste any time. We'll return for another super game at Wrigley Field in just a moment. Another baseball game on Channel 9. Relax wherever you are. Don't worry about work. You can set it off till a little bit later. It'll get done. But let's enjoy baseball while we can. We've been waiting a long time for this. Batting orders for the Cardinals. Our first look at them. Gary Templeton at short. Ken Obergfell at second. Keith Hernandez at first. Ted Simmons catching. Bobby Bonds in left. George Hendrick in right. Ken Reitz at third. Tony Scott in center. And the pitcher, Bob Forsh, was 0-1 this year. Last year was 11-11. And, and against the Cubs last year, 1-2 and lost one. Lifetime, he has a remarkable record against the Cubs. He's beaten them a dozen times. And they've only beaten Bob Forsh one, uh, four. Now for the Cubs. Yvonne De Jesus at shortstop leading off. Steve Onaveras at third. Bill Buckner at first base. Larry Bittner in left. Would you believe that Kingman's out of the batting order, took batting practice, and suddenly came up with some back spasms. So at the moment, he's not in the lineup. So Bittner will play left field and bat cleanup. Jerry Martin in right. Barry Foot catching. Carlos Lascano in center. Mike Tyson, second base, and the pitcher. Dennis Lamp, so far this year, has done very, very well for himself. He's won a couple of ball games. Last year, he was one and two against the Cardinals. Lifetime against St. Louis, he's won two and lost three. The plate umpire is Lanny Harris, Harry Wendelstead at first, Frank Pulley at second, Dutch Rennert is the umpire at third. We'll be back right after this message. Out in left field, there's Larry Bittner. Carlos Lascano's in center, and the right fielder is Jerry Martin. At third base, Steve Onaveras. Shortstop, Yvonne De Jesus. At second base, ex Cardinal Mike Tyson. And over at first is Bill Buckner. The pitcher is Dennis Lamp. And the catcher is Barry Foote. That's Dal Maxville coaching at first. And Jack Crow coaching at third. First base umpire, the veteran Harry Wendelstead. That second is Frank Pulley. Over to third, we see Dutch Renard. And behind the plate, Lanny Harris. As we said, the temperature is 90. And the wind is out of the southwest at 22 miles an hour. Here's one of those instant millionaires. Mr. Templeton? Oh, yes. All set? Okay, here we go. Ball one. throw and beautiful work by De Jesus on that one. That was not an easy play. Remember, he had a fast man going there. He had to go in the hole, fairly deep at shortstop. He got it over there on one bounce to Buckner. Well, no, as a matter of fact, he got it over there on the fly. I thought it was, I thought it was trapped in there in Bill's glove. Here's another and with look Templeton at it. running on that left side, Jack. All right, here's Obergfell. Ken Obergfell. At the moment, hitting 167, but he's still one of the pleasant surprises. He had a kind of a slow spring, but 
look for him to come along. Low. Ball two, two and no. Oh. Here's the fellow that uh, made Tyson available. Right. They're pretty confident in his ability to become their regular second baseman. Ground ball scooped up by DeJesus again and again. It's a short the first put out, and that'll bring up the batting champion, Mr. Keith Hernandez, 333 hitter. Hit 344 last year at 210 base hits. That's a strike. Strike one. Then for the first time, they had to split the MVP down the middle. <laughs> In another first baseman, name escapes me at the moment. <laughs> Ball one, strike one. Willie Stargell, of course, but boy, they both had great years. It was hard to choose between them. That's a strike, one and two. Uh, I know you talked to Stargell. How did he feel about having to split the award? Well, I think he was so happy about the way things had gone all year that he just took it in stride. I think had it been four or five years sooner, I think when he lost out to Torrey a few years ago, he felt that that was not a just vote, but I... That is a fair ball. Hits the bag, as a matter of fact. Buckner is still able to make the play, but he can't shovel that ball over to Dennis fast enough. And so it's a freakish base hit for Hernandez. Let's watch this one again. Hits the bag. Dennis was off the bag. Yeah, he was way off the bag. Anyway, Ted Simmons, the catcher, is up. Base hit. The end of two, the Sox at Boston, no score. Simmons, 294 hitter right now. One homer this year, four runs batted in. Last year, Ted hit 283. 26 homers, 87 RBIs. Two and oh. Ball two, no strikes. The end of one, Minnesota two, California one. Fregosi is getting a slow start with his ball club at California. The on deck man now is Bobby Bonds. Ball three. Ball four. Simmons walks on four pitches. That puts Cardinals at first and second with two out. Brings up Bonds. Bobby is hitting 286 at the moment. Last year at Cleveland, Bobby hit 275, had 25 homers, 85 runs batted in, and struck out 135 times. And became the suitcase Simpson of the 70s. <laughs> two on, two out. His big goal is to be the first guy to ever hit 400 homers and steal 400 bases. Strike one. Left field, it is a base hit played on the hop by Bittner, fumbles the ball, and a run comes in, and Bonds will take the extra base. Larry Bittner had a tough decision to make there. He was trying to make up his mind whether he had a chance to make the shoestring catch. Then he decided he better play it on the bounce. It was a very short, tricky hop, and it bounced out of his glove, and he had a little trouble finding the handle. Watch it now. So the Cardinals have a run as Hernandez, who got on base on a freak hit anyway, winds up scoring. One of those goofy things. They've had two rather goofy things now. Close. Very close. Bobby Bonds on second, nearly picked off.
They're charging Bittner with an error and they're giving Bonds a signal. Ball one now to Hendricks. But the moment is on a hot streak. He's hitting 359. Strike. This guy really takes a rip. Ground ball. Take it on the short tricky hop and fumbled by Anaveras. Another run in. Oh boy. Another error. And another run. That makes it two to nothing and Bonds takes third. There it is again. He booted that one in more ways than one. This has got to drive a manager wacky. Especially after a good workout yesterday, specifically for the purpose of trying to iron out some of those wrinkles. Well, here's Reitz. Notoriously hot spring hitter. At the moment, he's hitting 441. He always hits big in the spring, Reitz. Right now, he has 15 hits and 34 bats. Fly ball, very deep to left. Look out. It is caught. Oh, boy. On the track near the vines. Caught by Bittner. Reitz giving that one a pretty good ride. And when it left the bat with his win today, it's got to scare everybody in the Cub bench. So, two runs for St. Louis. First two men up were routine outs. On two hits. A couple of errors. And two men left. So, we go to the Cub half of number one. Cardinals two, Cubs nothing. Out in left field now for St. Louis. That's Bobby Bonds. Tony Scott in center. And the right fielder is George Hendrick. Third base, Kenny Reeves. Terry Templeton at short. At second, there's Ken Obergefell. And at first base, Keith Hernandez. Bob Porsche, the pitcher. And the catcher, Ted Simmons. Ricky Rojas coaching at first. And over to third, Joey M. L. Patano. The Jesus leading off for the Cubs with the score of the ball game, two to nothing, St. Louis. Roy Smalley got a two-run homer jack for Minnesota. They now lead California two to one at the end of an inning. Pittsburgh, normally a slow starter, getting a lot of runs early today. Lead Montreal four to nothing after three up at Olympic Stadium. The Jesus hitting 258. One homer this year, five runs batted in. Uh, Yvonne was very bashful about talking about that homer he's hit, wasn't he? <laughs> hey, could be another one. Back she goes. Back, back, back. Hey, hey. Right among the bleacher bums. Another home run for Yvonne De Jesus. Come on. Bang, go. He popped one out of here the other day, too. The moment he has been 267, four for 15. Two to one ball game, and that's a strike. High fly, right field, George Hendrick over, going back, back to the track, back. And the win nearly took that one away from him. George had his problems. Let's look at Yvonne's home run again. Oh, boy, just above the knees. He was really ready. Well, Jack Rosenberg has predicted a final score today of the Cubs 33, the Cardinals 28. Now, here's Hendry's catch. 
Hey, that's a nice shot from center field, isn't it? Huh? Uh, great work by that camera crew, too. So here's Buckner hitting 471 at the moment. Ball one. 16 hits and 34 bats for Billy Buck. Strike. Ball one, strike one. Two, strike one. Sox failed in the third. Boston not bat. No score at Beantown. The end of three. Pittsburgh four. Montreal nothing at Montreal. Foul ball. Two and two. A pretty important action tonight. Cincinnati at Houston. San Francisco at L.A. San Diego at Atlanta. How about that Horner story, huh? I would have bet you last night around 9 o'clock that we had a heck of a chance to see him in a Cub uniform. I had talked to a pretty good source in Atlanta yesterday. They swore he was gone. Fly ball deep to right center. Way back. Back to Scott. He grabs it right near the vines. Buckner giving it a very good ride. Well, every Cub so far of the first three to bat has given that ball the long high ride. One sailed out, the other two were caught. Now here's Bitten. There's Tony Scott all the way back. Okay. That brings up Larry Bittner playing today in place of Kingman. And Jack, if anybody wondered about Kingman's back, you know with a day like today, if he <laughs> could play at all, he'd be in there if he could crawl up to that plate. Strike. Wonder if we may still see him as a pinch hitter. I asked him that as I left the dugout. And he just kind of gave me a little glance. He wouldn't give me a yes. Strike one. That's a ball. Ball one, strike one. Well, Bittner has four hits and nine at bats this year. And a couple of cases of highway robbery against him. That's a ball. Two and one. Two to one ball game. Cardinals ahead. So the Braves, instead of trading Horner, have kind of put a punishment on him. They've sent him to Triple A. Ball three, three and one. Well, look at that uh, interesting hat shot. Kind of a Valentine's Day hat shot. Ground ball taken on one hop by Hernandez. A very, very good club man makes the unassisted out. One run, one hit. No errors, nobody left at the end of one. Cardinals two, the Cubs one. Tony Scott, center fielder, number eight in Kenny Boyer's batting order is going to lead off. He'll be followed by Force, then Gary Templeton. Cardinals two, the Cubs one on a windblown day at Wrigley Field. A balmy day, a summer day. We may hear Tom Skilling tell us tonight uh, on the news that this might have been a record setter temperature wise certainly close to it. One and one. That'll be all right but it's that news he's going to tell us about later tonight and tomorrow that we're not going to like. So to turn right around. Yeah. Ball two strike one. I think the sheerest drop we ever had here. Sunday one time there's a drive base hit base hit the center for Scott here comes Bob Forge had a double header with the San Francisco Giants there were about 40,000 people here model and the temperature dropped from 75 at the start of the game to something around 40 at the end of the second game some I know the papers made a big story out of it and, uh, you know, as I said, there were 40,000 people at the start. There probably weren't 5,000 by the time that second game finished because everybody was freezing to death. Foul ball. Strike one. Bob Forrest trying to bunt that runner over. Bob's making his third start of the season, his first of the year against the Cubs, of course. Last time out against the Phillies. 
He lost eight to three. Pitched eight innings. He only gave up two earned runs himself in that ball game, but the ball club lost eight to three. Last time out, he was not involved in the decision. The Cardinals lost to the Pirates four to three. Foul ball, strike two. Just about a year ago, on April 19th, as a matter of fact, here in Chicago, the Cubs beat Force three to two. But then he recorded back-to-back -back wins over them in August. A couple of times he looked at them. That one gets away. And what looked like a butt foul turned out to be just a missed pitch. Barry put the catcher and the runner of course running with it went all the way to third. Oh boy. Well let's see what they call that one. Here goes Scott. And they're going to call it a wild pitch. Ball one strike two. And that one got away after the batter offered with his bat. He thought, uh oh, good luck for the Cubs. He was bunted foul on strike three, but instead it turned out he missed the ball altogether. And so it's a stolen base and a wild pitch. Give him a stolen base, give him third on the wild pitch. Ball two, strike two. High foul, out of play to the right. The infield pulled in. Cardinals two, Cubs one. Blow it away. Full count, three and two. Come on, don't lose the picture. Puts men on first and third and brings up the shortstop, Gary Templeton. 211 base hits last year. WGN Television 9, Chicago, just about 2 o'clock. Central Standard Time. Ground ball. Tyson steps on second, throws to first. Gets his double play, but the run comes in. But in a spot like that, of course, the Cubs are glad to give up the run in order to get the DP. That'll bring up Orbert Fell with the score now three to one. Here it is. And Tyson was in perfect position to step on second and get that ball over to first in time. And that'll bring up Orbert Fell with two out and nobody on. Let's look at that double play from our center field camp. Now a good second baseman going to play that just like Tyson did. In other words, you've got time to make your play and then get out of the way. So the guy can't break up your throw. We're talking about that with Red Shane Dietz just before the game. Red was hitting infield down there, and of course, he was one of the outstanding second basemen. He was talking about the various ways to play second base, and he said, I never, I never did it any one way. He said, I like to mix it up a little bit so they can't be sure just what I'm going to do. Whether I'm going to go across that bag, step on it and back up, uh, go across at a different angle, uh, hit the bag and then jump up in the air and turn around and throw a ball in the air. A lot of different ways. That's the ball. Two and two. Broke out at another place for the Pirates, Jack. Mike Easler, who's a bench man, probably playing today, giving somebody a rest for the Pirates at a home run. He's got three home runs already. Down ball taken by Yvonne De Jesus. And that retires over Fell. He got one against the Cubs with a pinch hitter the other day, remember? Turned out to be pretty important. One run, one hit, no errors. There was a wild pitch. Nobody left. Let's go now to the Cub half of number two. St. Louis, three, the Cub one. Pretty well hit. 
Deep to left center. In the gap as Martin watches that first pitch. He should get two on this one. Even though it's played dirty well by Scott, he's got himself a double. Credit Tony Scott was playing the ball exceptionally well. He did all you could ask him to do with it. But Jerry, after all, is entitled to two bases when you hit one that deep in this ballpark. Here's the catcher, Barry Foot. Jerry's on an extra base jag, Jack, because that's his 10th hit. Four doubles, three home runs, seven of the 10 for extra bases. Wow. Ball one. <laughs> Ball two, two and Odeberry, two hundred hitter, one homer, three RBIs. He keeps getting that ball up to foot like he did that pitch. We got a chance to have a new game in a hurry. <laughs> Ball two, no strikes. Ground ball up to second base hit. That's going to bring one in. Here comes Martin. No play on him. So very foot. Lances one up the middle, and the Cubs have another run. And that makes it now St. Louis three, the Chicago Cubs two. The tying run on base. Nobody out. And Lascano, the center fielder, is up. So here's Carlos. Josh Coano said he was kidding Lascano the other day, the equipment manager. He said, Carlos, he said, how did you ever get out of Puerto Rico? And Lascano said, I took the train. Uh, ball one. Preston working this kid in uh, just kind of subtly. Didn't want to play him against Swan on Sunday. Figured he might be a little overmatched with that heat. Now brings him back against Porsche today. There's a wild pitch, and that puts the tying run in scoring position. Barry Foot going to second. Easily. Another wild pitch. One for each pitcher. Man on second. Nobody out. Ball two to the batter. Getting back to the Bob Horner story. His option to the Class AAA farm at Richmond. There's a fellow who hit 314 last year with 33 home runs and 98 runs batted in, but he's had, had a terrible start. He only has two hits and 34 trips, and he also has six errors in the first nine games. They just wanted to get over there and settle down. And the fans have really been crucifying him. Ball two, two and oh. Ball two, strike one on the foul. Oh, if you ever saw a guy with a Wrigley Field swing, he's got it. <laughs> now, what do you mean by a Wrigley Field swing, Milo? Right over that 368 sign in left center. A cozy power alley for a right-hand hitter. That's a little high. Ball three, strike one. Three and one. Ball three, strike two. Carlos was trying very hard to make you a good profit on that swing. <laughs> Tell you one thing, he didn't get cheated. Three and two. That's a ball. Oh, he showed patience looking at that off-speed pitch. So that brings up second baseman Mike Tyson, who should be able to guess now with Porsche a little bit, because after all, he was his teammate. Men off first and second, with the pitcher following. 
Another one of the ingredients about this game, Jack, that we talk about so often. Three years ago, this guy won 20 and lost seven. The next year, he dropped clear off to 11-17, was a break-even pitcher with a better club than he'd had the two previous years. He's just a mystery man of sorts. He's got the stuff to be a big winner. Ball one. Well, he's already proven it. 20 wins and seven losses that one year. And he had a 15 and 10 year, too, I believe. There are the mm -hmm. runners. There's foot. Second base. There's Cano on first. Foul ball. Ball one. Strike one. At the end of four. White Sox and Boston still scoreless. There's Joey. I asked Mike Tyson when he came out for batting practice today if it gave him a little eerie feeling looking across and seeing those two gold redbirds perched on a bat over there. Yeah, a little bit. I think he'd love to do something here today. One and one. No bunt. Ball two, strike one. Tyson looking down at Joey. Joey repeated the sign it looked like the last time. Make sure that Mike had it. Foul ball. Two and two. Pretty good weekday crowd today, considering the kids are in school. Some of them. <laughs> <laughs> You've already got a couple of two. them in trouble. <laughs> Foul ball. I wouldn't be surprised if we had a couple of parents or grandparents out here today who may have called the kid up and said, congratulations, you're going to be allowed to play hooky today. Because <laughs> I'm going with you. <laughs> two and two. That's Boyer. Foul ball again. Ball two, strike two, as Tyson spoils off some of Mr. Porsche's pitches. You know, up until just now, Horner never played his day in the minor leagues down in Atlanta. Came right off the uh, campus at Arizona State into a big league uniform. Two and two. Tyson strikes out. Brings up Dennis. Dennis can meet the ball. Foul tip, throw to second, close. Very Ooh. close, very just got back. Simmons throw down there to Gary Templeton, just about embarrassed Barry Foot. You know something, if that throws on the dime, he's out. Strike one. Hernandez and Reitz ready to race in. There's the butt. Fair ball. There's going to be a play at third. They've got a force. Over to first. Double play. Oh, brother. Dennis Lamp butted into a double play. And that retired the side. So the Cubs got a run on a couple of hits. No errors and a man left. At the end of two. St. Louis three. The Cubs two. Cardinals three, the Cubs two. Got a freaky single the last time up, bounced one off the first base bag, and with two out, that opened the gate for a two run inning. Just checking the cameras out, fellas, huh? Yeah. 
to do it, you have to check the cameras out. Ball one. Down ball, scooting out to Mike Tyson, and that's a routine out. That brings up Simmons. kids some of them are still on spring vacation this week the suburban schools are back in action hey how soon before somebody else break up the Oakland A's man uh -huh. that's what up have they won seven in a row won seven in a row beat uh, Seattle four to two last night they're nine and three they're on top Billy Martin's having a little fun ball two no strikes right of second base hit so Simmons has a walk and a single now Bobby Bonds the left fielder is up that the Aussie in the audience, the, the subject of that sign we saw that there's an Aussie in the audience is a fellow with the name of Jeffrey Richardson from Melbourne seeing his first game. There's a very high foul ball. The wind is blowing it back into the playing area. Buck. Buckner, Tyson are unable to handle it. No error. No play. Cardinals three runs on four hits. The Cubs two runs, three hits. Two and two. Foul ball. Two and two. Bobby Bond. you could say he's been around a little bit. And you would have figured at one time that he'd have been a giant forever. The way he came up and played and seemed to be a favorite out there. Boy, since he left them, he's had to check the hotel in the morning to find out what town he's in. <laughs> two and two. The old gag. What town were you in? Peoria. Old Joe gag. Peoria, huh? Well... Don't send your laundry out till after the second show. <laughs> two and two. Foul ball. Still two and two. Sunday out here, the Cubs and the Mets tried to prove that Fauteville wasn't dead. But if they play that way today, sooner or later it's going to catch up with them, and they've had it. A couple of errors and a wild pitch already. It's a very high foul ball. Once again, Buckner's over, and it is just out of reach. Two and two. You've seen it all before, haven't you, Preston? Huh? With luck, you'll see some more of it. 
There's Mr. Boyer with a lot of third base for this ball club. And the fellow next to him on our left in the picture, Red Shandienst, is an all-time legend. I think this is Red's 35th straight year in a big league uniform in one capacity or another. High fly, very deep to left center, way back. The wind's got it. Back she goes. Say goodbye. It's way, way back in there. A home run for Bobby Bonds. when he got it up in that jet stream and that 22 mile an hour wind took it from there. So Bobby Bonds has his first home run of 1980. His 322nd of his major league career. Oh boy. Cardinals five, Cubs two. Here's George Hendrick. Ball one. Safe on an error the last time up. There's a shot to left center. Base hit. It's going to be close at second. He is. He had it made, but he went past the bag. And Tyson was able to put it on him. There's a break for the Cubs. Jerry Martin, or rather Lescano, coming up with a very good throw, incidentally, here. Here's another look at it. There's Hendrick. And his momentum carries him past second base. Give him a single. The batter now is Kenny Reitz with two out, nobody on. That's Lynn McLaughlin. Ball two, two and oh. Well, you know, Bob Kennedy has a son, Terry, who catches for the Cardinals. And Shane Dietz has a son, Kevin, who was recently signed into the Cubs organization as an injury. Ball three, strike one. Boy, it shows you the calendar spinning by that <laughs> Kennedy kid today. If he isn't big enough to go to work, I never saw one who was. He is a horse. There's a high pop foul. Pop foul. And would we'll be playing with a lot of clubs. Just unfortunate that he's playing behind a guy like Ted Simmons, who's an established big league hitter, catcher, and star. Kenny Boyer said before the ball game that it's entirely possible that Kennedy could someday move Simmons to left field for this ball club, even though Simmons is not the outstanding left fielder that you'll ever see. But he's got to make a place for that bat. Ball three, strike two. Reed sent one deep to left the last time up. Pittner making the catch. Pittner playing left and uh, because Kingman has some back spasms. You wonder if they hadn't made the trade for Bonds, if that move might not have taken place this year. Pretty well hit, deep to right center. That's pretty well back there. It is gone. Kenny Reese, as we said, a notoriously talented spring hitter, has just hit an opposite field home run on the line to right center. That is his second home run of the year. And now the score of the ball game is the Cardinals six, the Cubs two. That brings up the center fielder, Tony Scott. Well, if the Cardinals score two or three more here, it'll probably stimulate the Cubs to go out and win the game. <laughs> That's the way it's worked a couple of times already. Ground ball, Tyson over, drops it, picks it up, recovers in time, he gets the out. In the inning, a couple of runs. Make that three runs on three hit, uh, four hits, two of them homers. Homers by Bonds and Reeves, no errors, nobody left. So we go to the Cub half of number three now, score the ball game, St. Louis six, the Cubs two. Jesus is going to lead it off, and here's what he did when he led off the first inning. 
Didn't wait long either. A 1-0 pitch, and he jacked it out of here. But right now, he almost needs to start doing that act over again because it is a 6-2 Cardinal lead as the Cubs bat in the third. Top of the order to Jesus Antaveras and Buckner do. So one for one, a round tripper. A high ball. White Sox and Red Sox scoreless after four and a half at Fenway. Minnesota leading California three to one after three and a half. They've now played five innings at Fenway, still no score. Four innings have been completed at Minnesota, three to one. Twins over Angels. Jim Fergosi's club getting off to a rocky start. Line drive into left center. That ball's rolling in the gap with the left fielder over to cut it. He's going to try to stretch it. The throw's going to be not in time. And a hustling leg double for the Cubs shortstop Evander Hayson. Oh, you like to see that kind of scrap. And you like to see him take off and stretch it. Be aggressive. Now, that wasn't a legitimate double. He just simply challenged him and got in there safely. The throw was a little toward the shortstop side. And he, another look at him now from center field. He knew when he rounded first, boy. He's eating up some real estate in a hurry. That good slide with that leg tucked under. And it's a hustling double for DeJesus. All right, on Tavares. Let's see if that can be the start of something big here. That's the kind of a play where the coach can't help you. You've got to do that one on your own. Instinct takes over on that one. That's right. If he'd have taken time to let the coach help him there, might have cost him making it. He's two for two, home run and a double. Two balls and no strikes. They have played six innings at Montreal. The Pirates still have Montreal down five to nothing. Montreal's pitching may be a little suspect with a loss of May and Schatzeter. Two balls and a strike. If Pittsburgh makes a shambles of Montreal as they have the Cardinals, two legitimate challengers. The ball club could run away and hide. They've got that kind of talent. Look at that. Oh, he bobbled it and won't have a play. A usually reliable third baseman. In fact, an outstanding one. Just simply didn't get that ball in the pocket enough to hang on to. And you're going to get another look at it. The pitch was away from him. Reach backhanding, but I believe it hit on the heel of the glove. Maybe it's not the players. Maybe it's the field. <laughs> And the funny it's part to both ball clubs. <laughs> the, the, scarring it as a base hit since he had to come clear over by the bag. Now Billy Buckner with a chance to take advantage of that play. Two on, nobody out. Need to get a cluster here. Six to two, Cardinals. Fly ball, left field. But the left fielder Bonds backs up, reaches high to grab it. Win kind of hold of it at that. But he had the height and the reach to grab it. Buckner is out, and it's one away. Tough decision for DeJesus here. If he's tagged up at second, of course, he's going to be able to make third after the catch. And with only one out, he could come in. But on the other hand, he's got to get down the base path a few feet in case that ball does blow over Bond's left, uh, uh, left shoulder there. Now you've got your four hitter today. And if you're joining us late, Larry Bittner's playing left field and batting cleanup. Dave Kingman took batting practice and a back spasm kept him out of the starting lineup. So here's Bittner. He bounced to the first baseman in the opening inning as you looked at the runners first and second. One away. Fouled up on the screen. Strike one. Jesus second on Tavares first one away Buckner hit the ball hard to left he'd have got that ball up in the air at all would have been a long ball it's that kind of a day we've seen the wind help some balls here already turning but no throw and no infielder was making a move Larry Bittner trying to do some good against Forsh. Cut right through a sharp breaking pitch. Just a little foul tip on that one. That may be the best pitch Mr. Forsh has thrown. He had to have something on it 
because the ball was up. If he throws that ball up there flat, Bittner got a chance to take him halfway to Lake Michigan. One ball and two strikes. Cincinnati Reds are as hot as their nickname. The Cardinals opening this two-game set, and they jumped into a lead here, 6-2, to two, in the bottom of the third. Opportunity to score here for the Cubs. That's off the pitcher's glove. Will he have a play? No. Bases will be loaded. That will go as a base hit. It's the third one of the inning and the sixth of the game, and the hit column goes to six for the Cubs. Here it is again. Now, there's a case of a pitcher's instinct making him go for the play. And the Cubs got a break on him touching it because it's a double play ball to the shortstop if it goes by him. So let's see if Jerry Martin can now make some hay while the sun shines at Wrigley here. He's got a teammate on every base. DeJesus third, Antivere is second. Bittner getting his first hit of the day. Infield variety off the pitcher's glove. Let's see if we can get right back in this thing. He represents the tying run. Strike one as he goes after a low pitch. He owns one career grand slammer, Milo. What a spot for number two, huh? And there they are. The bases are loaded. One away. Martin had a double in the second inning. Preston Gomez hoping his outfielder can pull the trigger here. One ball, one strike. Martin is playing right field today. Last few days, he's been kind of back and forth between center and right. He's playing right field in this one. Gotten off to a good start with his bat. He'd like to keep it going here. One ball, one strike. Turning, no throw. Oberk fell, it snuck back in, but the play was pretty well telegraphed, both by the pitcher and the second baseman. Antaveras alertly got back, and just as <laughs> alertly, Force says, I gotta hang on to this thing. No sense giving him one. One ball, one strike. Force ready again. Base hit to the left side. The Hayes scores. They're going to wave on Tavares. The throw toward the plate will be late. A beautiful slide by on Tavares. Two runs are in. The Cubs are back in it here. The throw by Bonds was a good one. Let's look at it again. Wrapped a high breaking pitch through the left side. De Jesus scoring easily. Now they're going to challenge Bonds. He makes a good throw here. Now watch this beautiful slide right through the wicket. And he's in there. Now it's a six to four ball game. Good slide. And you have Bittner at second. Martin with two ribbies. His second straight hit. And it's a 6-4 to four Cardinal lead. That really was a great slide because, I'll tell you, nobody blocks a plate better than Simmons. Barry put the batter. Line drive, hit right center. That's going to bring Butler home. That could bring the other runner home because Martin's going to be waved by a mouth potato. There'll be no throw for the relay man. And just like that, it's a brand-new ball game at Wrigley. George Hendrick had a little trouble with that ball out there. That took any chance of Templeton throwing it on, so he just held on to the ball, and here it is. He hit this line drive with some overspin on it, and when it hit the grass, it took off. Bittner scored easily, of course. Now they've got thoughts about waving Martin, and you saw Templeton hold on to the ball. The sliding Martin is in, and it's a brand new ball game. Foot with a couple of RBIs and an extra base hit. Donnie Moore, former Cub, is throwing in the St. Louis bullpen. All right, we're going to see Martin scoring again. Look at him, Al Patano. He's thrown his shoulder out of joint, getting him home. So, a little powwow on the Cardinal Mount. Clyde Osteen, who was a pretty good lefty in his day. Two RBIs for foot, runs five and six scoring. And so we're all wrapped up <laughs> tight as you can be here. Here we go again. And the rookie center fielder's got a chance to give us a lead for the first time. Because Barry Foot is at second base. There's only one out. One ball and no strikes. <laughs> Arnie just had a good idea. Remember last year we played that 
Cub Philly Marathon. There's a strike. Called it. Enjoy a winter night with the warm Cubbies. Cuddle up with the Cubbies. The way things are going, we might fill a whole month remembering 80, huh? <laughs> Got a couple of pretty good prospects already this year. <laughs> Coming back from that 9 to 1 deficit the other day. And this one's got some potential to it. Yeah, we're only in the third inning and a dozen runs have scored. And we've had 15 hits. A little like that White Sox game at Fenway yesterday. The veteran pitcher worked on the rookie that time. He moved the ball around on him and really pitched to a couple of spots and struck him out. So now it's up to Tyson to get us in front. Two away in the inning. Barry Foot is still at second base. Tyson, who was the other strikeout victim for Bob Force in this game, stepping in now against his old teammates, came up in their organization. One ball and no strikes. Little Mike with a chaw about as big as he is. See if he can get foot to carry the mail home and give the Cubs a lead. Two balls and no strikes. So Forge, who came into this bottom of the third with a four-run lead, has had some problems. He's given up five hits. High fastball, 3-0. The White Sox just got a pair in the sixth and lead the Red Sox two to nothing after five and a half. All right, let's see what he does with a 3-0 with the pitcher due up next. And two away. McLaughlin still throwing in our bullpen, so both bullpens are busy. All right, the 3-0 to Tyson. Strike three and one. Four runs are in. Martin's driven in a pair. Barry Foote has driven in a pair. De Jesus, Antavaris, Bittner, Martin, and Foote have all had hits in the inning. Three balls, one strike. He walked him. With McLaughlin continuing to throw, I suspected that maybe we would go to the bench here, and they're going to Jose Jesus Figueroa. This little guy just might not be ready yet, but boy, you gotta like him. I don't know how much you gotta see him in the spring, Jack, but this little guy makes contact. He can run. He's got a good arm. He's a good outfielder. And when Henderson was injured the other day, they brought him up. He's got the. Uh, he's got some talent, this kid. Yes, he's from uh, Santo Domingo. Last year at Wichita, he hit 291. He only hit one home run. He's not a long ball hitter, but he did have himself 124 hits, and he stole 28 bases down there. Batting left-handed against the right-hander Forsh with two teammates aboard, foot at second, Tyson at first. He had a very good spring. He had seven hits and 18 at bats this spring. That's a 389 batting average. Sends a fly ball down toward the corner, but Bonds is over, and he makes the play. So it didn't take him long to look at a big league pitch, did it? <laughs> but right after it, sent it pretty well down toward the corner, but Bonds was there, but the Cubs have an inning. They get four runs on five hits. There weren't any Redbird errors. It was a walk. Two Cubs were left, and we've got a new game. After three at Wrigley, first game of a two-game set, Cubs six, Cardinals six.